Hello and welcome to this uh, video for um, making flags for your 1600 scale uh, ACW um, ships. So today I thought I'd put together this little tutorial about flags. I've done a bunch of tutorials that I've put up on my website so you can access those there, but the one thing I've not done before yet is, is flags. Um, I've kind of alluded to it a few times, but I thought since I've got four flags that I need to actually Put on these little gunboats um, back here that uh, I thought that I'd take the opportunity to make a quick video and show you how I do them. So as you can see here we've got a US flag for a um, Union boat. This is like a little river boat, one of the rams. It's a scratch build that I've made um, ages ago but the um, process is still the same. So uh, how I do flags is I make them out of metal. I don't use paper. I know a lot of people use print them out on paper and stick them on there, and that's awesome. Um, and that works out really well for um, uh, for like an expediency sort of thing. But um, the reason why I go with metal is just for durability. Um, they're a little bit harder to to uh, break off and stuff like that. Plus, also you can get some really realistic looking kind of weathering or like flapping kind of motions. As you can see here on this Confederate boat, I've got a slightly more uh, collapsed flag back here. And um, the, the, this um, uh, flagship flag and then the actual pennant like that. So there's different ways that you can do it. You can kind of have them flap around and they'll stay put. They'll stay nice and steady. And, um, and like I said earlier, they don't really shear off of these really easily. They will shear if you put too much pressure on them, but generally speaking, they're more durable. So I thought um, today I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that that process um, and and I'll show you what I do. First off, we'll have a look at uh, supplies. So the first thing, obviously, we need to have on board is a knife. I, I also like to have some sort of razor blade. This just comes out of this out of your usual like uh, hand thing, but I'd like to use it as kind of like a stamp cutter. Oops. I also like to use uh, this ruler. This ruler is really nice. It's this little uh, six inch ruler that um, it's metal and really small. So super handy. Uh, a pair of pliers or a needle nose tweezers. And that should do it in terms of actual tools. Now what I actually make my flags out of is this um, is metal. Uh, as I said earlier, this is just a, it's like a wrapper that came off of a, off of a chocolate that I got out of a, like a Christmas chocolate kind of thing. Um, I really enjoy I really enjoy working with this stuff because it's really quite uh, again durable um, and uh, thin and you can mold it really well. Um, the other the other source I get you know other than the the candy stuff I can you I've used this stuff in the past which is basically the top right off the top of like a cream cheese or something or um, any kind of like uh, thing that you need to get a um, like a fresh dairy product or something like that. And the reason why I use this one in particular, sometimes there's the plastic kinds, I don't use any of, that, any of that. This is just the metal, the actual metal ones. You can kind of see on here, there's a little bit of a texture. Um, I don't know, let me get a little bit higher so you can see it, but there's a little bit of a texture there. Um, it creates a little bit of extra durability. So there's not, you can actually kind of play around with this a little bit. Um, it's a bit stronger than normal aluminum or any other type of sheet metal uh, it, that's, that's quite thin. But it does have texture, so if you don't want the texture, then have a look around for uh, some of these ones that are going to be like like this, which are just a little bit of sheet metal. It's really really thin and flat. So what I, the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll take a look at the model that I'm going to actually attach it to. And in this case, I've got a little um, gunboat, a little Union gunboat. Uh, they usually hung hang off of this a um, little bit of uh, rigging here, so I'll put it here. And they're usually about, uh, they'll go from about here to about here. So they're actually quite large flags. It's a little bit bigger than, than the ones that I've got down here. So that's actually going to help us out in, on the painting side of things. But the first thing I'll do is I'll grab my ruler, set that stuff aside. And I'll kind of just figure out what the right size is about. Kind of hold it up on there, just kind of give myself a good... About that. That's a nice big flag. That's gonna be it's gonna be relatively large. Okay, so I cut out a strip. 
very carefully. This does dull your blade pretty quickly, so. Um, yeah. Oops, not quite. Let's see if I can get on. There we go. That won't. All right. Cool. You end up with this nice little strip about that big. And it, there might be a few tears in there and stuff like that, but again, that's just more of a reflection of that blade being dull than anything. Next, I'll grab this um, kind of flat blade. And I'll figure out, first thing I'll do is I'll kind of make a nice little right angle here. And what I tend to do is I just kind of push it down and just kind of drag it Oops, back a little bit. That was terrible. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. There. Yeah, it's much better. So I'll just I'll just take this blade and I'll just figure out how kind of long you kind of want it to be. It's going to be a little bit longer than it is tall. So I'll just kind of go about there. Push that down and chop that off. And then I'll make, since I'm doing four boats, I'll do that four times. Okay, three, one. These are going to be gigantic planks. Maybe, maybe I've made these a bit too big. That's okay. Show off. Well, I'll tend to do a few extras just because sometimes when I'm painting, when I'm gluing them on, there might be a disaster might strike me. Might have to do, <laughs> might have to dispose of one and try again. And that one's got that cut in it, so I'll just leave that for now. Cool. So now we've got a few flags. Grab that one that escaped. There we go. So there's quite a few of them there. The next thing that I'll do is I'll tend to grab some sort of. Um, uh, thing to put uh, some glue on. Actually, we'll use that little piece, that little scrap that is a little bit rubbish. And I use some super glue. So, for some, super glue is what I tend to use for uh, fixing these on. I'll put a little bit on here. It can be really, it can be anything really if you wanted it to be. But I will grab one of these guys, and since this is an, a really quite a big flag. Kind of position it on there is going to be quite large, which is okay. And I will grab that and I'll just get a little bit of glue just on one edge. And then you'll just kind of stick it on there, wipe a little bit of the glue off onto the actual thing. And you just kind of hold it there for a second. Nice and flat. Don't change anything. Don't make any of the, any of the, um, waves just yet. And then after a couple minutes, you're good to go. Let that sit for a second while you do the other ones. I have to refresh your glue at some point. I'll probably do it after this one. It's two. Touch my glue. Next one. I use for my rigging I use a um a nylon thread so it's a little bit it may take a little bit more kind of holding to than it would cotton cotton tends to take um cotton threads do tend to take the glue a little bit better but I like to, I prefer to use um nylon because it doesn't beat up when, when the um when there is glue or paint on it it's 
the slightly more durable or more, more kind of straight looking thing, especially for these small models. They also, it also doesn't shrink. It stays, um, it stays the way that it, uh, it's been affixed. That one's got a bit of a bend in it, but that's okay. All right. So I think that's everybody. Shove these off. I don't need these right now. I will tend to, I've got a, a little baggie here where that I, where I keep, um, spare pieces. So you can see different sizes of, um, uh, flags that I've done in the past. For some flag posts, like when I'm actually putting them, like, like, like on these ones, you've got like an actual flagpole. Um, those flagpoles I've made out of, um, bristles from, uh, um, artificial Christmas trees. So you can get them, or you can use like a broom, like at the end of a broom bristles and stuff like that. Sometimes it'll be plastic, but these are, these are plastic. And then again, the reason why I get it is that they're super like flexible like that. You know, you can stick a flag on the end of that, accidentally bump it and it's fine. If you have a metal flagpole, sometimes when you do that, it'll, um, just the, sh uh, the shear factor and then the stresses and stuff like that might break the, might break the flag. So for me, a good combination is having a nice, really flexible flagpole. In this case, it's the stuff. In this case, it's the thread. Um, otherwise you can take a bit of the stress, some of the, um, uh, stress of handling uh, or bumping or something like that. Um, when, um, when you have a flexible flagpole. Okay. So that's done. I'll go back to my first one that I did, which is that, this one here. This one's had the longest to dry. Now we're going to shape the flags. Um, this, it's very likely that these will probably come undone or they might, they might, they, I might need to apply a little bit more glue. That's very normal in this case. Uh, you're going to be kind of man handling the, um, the metal a little bit. And so you might actually, um, snap them off, but that's all right. So, uh, when it comes to ones that are built on thread, the, what I'll do is I'll grab, I'll grab the base like this, and then I will just grab, take my tweezers, grab a spot somewhere in there and just kind of do like a, just a, a, a bend in any direction. It doesn't really matter. Um, it does if you want to kind of replicate a specific wind pattern, but I'll just do kind of like a little zigzag like that. That's it. That can be that one. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the, uh, another one, another kind of fun thing that I like to do is again, grabbing that corner. I like to take kind of like an extreme angle on the flag. I do a little bit like this. Oops. And then I can, then you take in like a slightly different angle. And then again, and I take a tiny little bit at the corner and just roll that back. Like it's really just whipping it at the end. So again, pretty straightforward. Uh, and this one here. I'm trying to do too many bends because then um, uh, then it's going to look like a, more like an accordion than it actually being gripped by the wind. Twist them back down on themselves a bit like that. Oops, I've got a little bit of wet glue and it's still stuck to my finger. That can be a bit of a disaster. I've got some broken rigging now too. Excellent. <laughs> Come back and have to fix that later. Okay. So those are my flags all done there. Next, next is up is painting. So again, I'll pop these over here and I'll show you what paints I tend to use for at least for the red, white, and blue flags. I've got a little bit of a method to this madness. All right, so for the supplies wise, obviously a paint palette. Pop that there. Um, sometimes I like to chuck. I'm not going to do it in this case, but I do, did want to show this off. This is a, um, just a little bit of blue tack on the, on an old Tamiya bottle, and you can pop these these vessels just right on top of there with the blue tack, and it becomes a really good um, uh, painting handle. And I don't really use any of the other types of painting handles but this one's this one's quite good so but in this case i won't need i won't need it but i just wanted to show that off in case you wanted to have a, a paint handle that wasn't one of the uh, games workshop ones <laughs> um paints that i use for uh white i use deck tan for white slightly it kind of an off it's a uh, gray but it's it's um it's nice and bright i use dark blue for the blue fields and for red i use cavalry brown i used to use um proper red, like really red red, but it really came across as being 
uh, way too cartoony, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so you'll see like on here, um, the flags are, um, it's, it's that cavalry red or cavalry brown, which is actually quite red. So I do use that and it does do a pretty good job of coming across on that color. Same thing with the white. I'll, I'll just point that out really quick. Um, the the um, brown, or sorry, the gray being a, not quite white, but it's at least it's got a nice little kind of su subdued color to it, which is really good. Cool. So those are the three colors that I'll, I'll be using. And a little bit of black primer. Uh, brush on primer for these because um, obviously I can't spray them. I do tend to do my flags last. Um, I don't really know why. <laughs> There's no real reason. Um, but there we have it. I haven't I haven't uh, coated it yet. So the first thing I will do, I'll put some water over here. So we've got the rinse and then a little bit of a towel. There we go. So I'll just really quickly. Prime those. You may need to steady it with your finger. It's all right. I should make sure it's in the field of view. Give it a nice bit of a coat there so that it doesn't lose paint. And the rigging is black too, so that kind of that's that's helpful too, so that it can um, it can be a little bit um, not 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 careful, but you can you can be a little bit sloppy when we get close to the edge. But if it is a flagpole one, then I'll do flagpoles last, so that I can be a bit sloppy at this stage if I need to be. Cool. So now it's sailing under the black flag, at least for a couple minutes while that dries. And again, we'll just quickly flip through these really fast. Oops. I've had some questions around uh, how do I do my rigging. I might do a, a video eventually on, on rigging, but I'll tell you, just like everyone else, I it's not my favorite part <laughs> of the process. Um, I tend to simplify my rigging, as you can see here. It doesn't have the same, uh, doesn't have all of the rigging lines that you would probably find in a, on a schooner. At least I think it's a schooner rig. And um, so I kind of took some liberties. I just chose some main, some of the mainstays and went with that. The rat lines are 3D printed from a Black Sales STL that I got off of online. I think it was a free, it was a free download. Uh, I took it, took a little, a couple of experiments on how to print them out with supports, but I did end up um, achieving that. I thought they turned out all right. That's that broken one. The nice thing about nylon is you can kind of get in there and quickly remove a little bit, and there's and it's not frayed. It, you won't have frayed lines, which is kind of nice. Um, it's a nice clean break, which means you can, if it depending on the break, not this one, but sometimes the break means you can just reattach it with with some glue. Um, without having any frays or um, anything like that. But this one it was, looks like it broke right in the middle, which was not great, but that's okay. I can just chuck another one in there. So I'll use the, um, I use the nylon. It's like a black or, or brown nylon. Um, doesn't really matter what color it is, to be completely honest, because I end up just going over it with this, with this primer that I'm using now and, um, and painting the black. All right, we're nearly there. One more, one more flag to go. You could probably paint these on a separate uh, jig if you wanted to. Um, I could give you a bit more stability than, than the ones that I'm showing you off here, but I'll leave that to you to explore. I do like to put them on the model, use the model to as a holder, and then I'll glue it on later. 
I'm always paranoid about how glue, especially super glue, how it interacts with the paint job. So I'm not a particularly good super gluer <laughs> when it comes to detail. All right. That's everything there. So we'll let those kind of dry for a second. Oops. Let's double check them. Yeah, they're still a little bit wet. So maybe I will um, just let that kind of sit for a second and then uh, we'll, we'll come back when they're all dried up and ready to go. One, two, three, and four. Four gunboats. All flying the pirate flag. All right. I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. I'm working on um, the uh, flags, painting the flags next. So um, I've got one done, uh, a little bit out of out of the uh, out of the sequence, uh, and it turned out okay. Um, I'm going to try to have a better have a better go at it this time around. But it was um, uh, it was quite a large flag and didn't quite come out the way I was hoping. But we'll try a second one just to be um, just be on the safe side and walk you through the steps just to make sure that we're on the same page. Okay, so what I tend to do, the first thing I'll do is uh, I've, I've, I've base coated this flag, uh, the flag white, uh, or actually using this Vallejo deck tan that I discussed earlier. It's quite a good um, uh, base coat for white, and I tend to use it for white. Uh, I, I use it for all of the base coats of anything that I paint white, um, because then you can add white to it for um, uh, highlights and dry brushing and stuff like that. So it's good to start with something that's not quite bright white uh, for your white. This is a great color to build up from deck tan. Highly recommend it. Um, the American flag is quite a complicated one with its stripes and, and, and its fields and stuff like that. So what I've done with my, my collection is I've gone with quite an artistic approach. So as you can see here, this isn't quite 100% accurate, doesn't have the 13 stripes that the real American flag has, but it does have stripes, and you can see it from three feet away. It does look like an American flag. It also doesn't have any of the stars in the fields as well. So it's quite, um, it's quite abstract. It's quite an impression of, of the flag, uh, but it is um, at a distance. It does, the, it does the business. So that's what we're going to do today. So for this this flag, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite a big one. So we got a big canvas to work with. So what I've done is I've put in um, some of my uh, this uh, cavalry brown, a um, Vallejo cavalry brown. Again, this is my favorite color for red, and it look, goes on top of deck tan really well. It looks quite reddish, which is really good. So with that in mind, we'll start off. So I put some red here a little bit earlier. Okay, right. we've got a nice thin paintbrush. This is like a super detail one. It's my uh, army painter one, and it's called the character brush. If you're looking at those, it's kind of an older brush, so I don't know if they're still available. But any really thin detail brush will do. All right. Now, the first thing I do is I always put one stripe at the top and one stripe at the bottom. And then uh, you can go from there. So... I'll just go follow the length at the bottom. And I want the width of your brush to be the width of the stripe. So one down the middle, or one down there, one down here on the side, and it's very possible that, that, that it's not going to come out particularly consistent. Like here, it's thinner on one end. It's all right. You can just flip it around, give it another go. And you should have the, uh, a flag that looks like this. And then you just flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. If your flag has a bunch of contours in it, just take it nice and slow. Follow the contours as best you can. Cool. There you go. That's that. Super easy. <laughs> um, next up... I like to put a stripe right down the middle of the flag. So I will start, I'll kind of map it out. So I'll put one like a little mark there. I'll find kind of like generally the center, put another mark there and another mark at the end. 
and then it's just a matter of connecting the dots. So again, making sure you've got a nice flow of paint coming off of the brush. A nice consistent width. Like that. Might want to thicken that up a little bit. Cool. And then do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, a dot there. Put a little dot in the middle. A little dot on the edge. And just connect them. Following the contours of the folds. Like that. Cool. So your flag should look kind of a little bit like that, which is all right. And then you get the idea. You just fill in a couple more. So in this case, I might put in two, try to wedge in two stripes in between there. Right. Like that. You don't need to be super um, consistent with your with these ones. Not yet anyway, you can go back and fix those in a second. A little bit of a hand tremble, sorry. Get this off this one. Ah, okay, so that one's completely messed up, but I'll show you a way to fix that in a second. Flick that over, let that dry fully before you try to fix things. Again, start working slow. The trick with the with the American flag is you really want this area to look the best when it comes to it. So the stuff that's closest to the flagpole is actually not too bad if it's a little crunched in like that. You can always fix that up with a little bit extra white. But the um, but actually what I found visually, um, it's this it's this part here in terms of the stripes that people kind of gravitate towards. All right, so this one's starting to still a little bit wet there, so I'm going to wait to fix that in a second. But what I might do in the meantime is I might try to thicken up a little bit of these ones down here at the bottom. They are a little bit thin. They're a little bit too... Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, that dry. So you'll see here, it's not quite a... doesn't have quite a, um, a consistent straight line approach to it. And again, this is this. Um, I'll do I'll do some repairs to that, but it's not going to get like 100% um, straight and perfect. Again, like this goes back to that idea of kind of creating an impression of of the of the flag rather than the actual um, an accurate flag. So it's still a little bit wet on those sides, but it's starting to get a bit drier up here at the top. So we might be able to repair that in a second. The way that I repair that is just using a little bit more of your deck tan again put in a little bit there Oops. <laughs> helps to clean out your brush just a little bit of red in there maybe i should use a different brush I'll use a different brush <clears throat> this one's probably a little bit better actually it's got a nice finer point should have started with that one <laughs> okay so and in this case you again you just do the exact same thing with just making sure you stay in within the white just make it look a little little kind of line there just, just kind of pull it across Try to separate those lines a little bit. Like I was saying earlier, just get it down to the get it to the edges there. For some reason, this is what makes or breaks the flag is how this these little 
sections here are done. Yeah, it's not looking great. So I want to go back onto it with some red. That's okay. Sometimes you just end up going back and forth, back and forth between red and white, red and white, and just fixing up the lines a little bit, a little bit more at a time, making them a tiny bit more precise with every with every fix. Alternatively, you can start with the red as a base coat instead of the white, as I've done here. It's just that it's a little bit harder for white to go over red than the other way around. So that's why I, I tend to start with start with a base coat of white. It's a little bit easier. I'm not putting too much paint on there. And again, you're just, just trying to fix up a few of these little lines. You don't even have to fix them all up if you don't want to. Sometimes I find that some, there might be a side that's kind of like a champion side, you know, like it's a side that, that you're probably going to see more often than the other ones, um, especially when it's when these are like super wrinkly. Um, so sometimes if, you, if you're finding yourself getting frustrated with the edges, just just choose the just choose to work on the on the, the champion side a little bit. Just go with that. lumpy in some places. I'm trying to move out some of those lumps, white lumps. Cool. All right. I think that'll do. So the stripes are there. And on that side, ooh, yeah, let's fix it up. That's just obvious enough, obvious enough for me to be annoyed by that. Let's see it on the table. There we go. Okay. Again, not not precisely 13 stripes. If that's all right. And you'll notice, like up in this corner here, uh, there's probably not. I mean, it's kind of a little bit sloppy. I didn't bother cleaning that up because I knew that I was going to paint over it in a second with the blue. So you can get a, you can be a little bit more. Um, uh, forgiving in that area, although I am noticing now that I would like to do fix this up a tiny bit. There we go. Cool. Sometimes you'll do that. Sometimes you'll just kind of do it. Sometimes you don't care. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to push on through and not worry about the stripes so much. All right. Next up is the blue. So there's a little bit of blue there. Again, this is dark blue. It's actually quite a quite a vibrant blue. Um, I might actually, in the future, pick a slightly darker one, maybe a Prussian blue or a bright, light Prussian blue or something like that, because uh, this is quite, um, quite an intense blue, but that's okay for now. And what I do with this is I will, uh, just like before with the stripes, I'll kind of mark out um, where I want it to be. So like um, just a little bit less than half and down to about the center. Got that little, little uh, rectangle and then fill it in. All the way to the edge. Cool. And then we'll try and just use that same and kind of check the top a little bit and try to move. Try to mark it a bit. Yep, so now there's like a little mark there. I can kind of see how big the rectangle is on this side. 
Penciling that out. Pulling it across. And then I can fill that in just like on the other side. I'm not going to bother putting the stars on. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. It's, um, you can always put the hint of stars on. I've done that in the past where I've just put little, little specks on there. But uh, it tends to, once you get those specks looking pretty aligned, it starts looking like someone's just splattered paint on it rather than actually look like stars. So I've just kind of I've opted to not worry about it. All right. And that's that. One last touch I gotta do is to fix up the rigging around it. So you can see I was a little bit sloppy with the white paint there. That's not to worry. I've got a little bit of my primer still left here. And just give that a little bit of a touch up. Like that. All the way up to the edge. Same thing at the very top. Like that. Cool. And that's it. That's good enough for me. At least for this little guy. And again, at three feet, it's going to look like a nice big American flag. And as you can see, you do kind of improve after a couple of iterations. So this one only had those six stripes. So I could probably put another stripe in between each of those. Um, as you can see, they're not quite uh, the same. But I can go back and just touch that up again. Keep going. Keep practicing. And after you do a couple of them in a row, it goes pretty quickly. And what I found with these bigger ones, these are actually slower and harder to do than these small ones. These small ones you can do kind of like a quick, when I'm painting on these ones, I'll do kind of a quick flick with 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 the red, and it actually um, it, it doesn't it looks uh, kind of like a sloppy paint job, but it actually looks like streaks um, with with the smaller ones, and that's fine. Um, it looks pretty good. It comes out all right. So there you go. That's it. That's the American flag, and uh, um, for um, for the Union ships uh, when doing con the Confederate flag. It's not often that you see kind of the classic battle flag that you on, on there. The later later ironclads may have had it. This is the CSS Charleston, which would have been uh, 63, 1863, 1864. Um, I've done a very similar thing with that. I started with a, this one. I started with a, a base coat of red, and then I just put a white X on it, and then I put another blue X inside of that one, and then some tiny little dots where the stars go um, for that. And again, same exact colors, um, red, white, and blue. Um, but the um, it's not like the uh, it's not 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 uh, orange or anything like that. Not for these ones anyway. Uh, some some ships had had the uh, an admiral's pennant on it, so that would be like anything that would be the flagship. This would be the admiral's flag. In this case, I just did a blue one. Sometimes there'd be stars or something on that, but again, I'm abstracting it, making it small. And then the actual Confederate flag, which uh, on, on naval ensign was um, was this uh, kind of stars and bars. So that's it. That's um that's how I do my paint my uh, uh, American flags. Uh, please leave any questions, comments in, in down in the comments, and um, and I'll be sure to uh, reply. Cool. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.